app sync dashboard for 4.0. And if we go over into the settings on the upper right hand corner there, you'll see the settings is highlighted in blue since you've clicked on it. And then the storage systems is highlighted. You click add. Here we're first going to discover an extreme IO array. Simply just put in the credentials. And click next. AppSync will obviously discover the array. You can see the system name, which is the serial number, that it's an extreme I.O. and the firmware version 6.2 that it's running. You check the box next to the array you want to add or discover. And then you're presented with a summary screen just to verify that everything's correct. And you click finish. And then you just get the status that the array was configured successfully. And then on the summary screen under infrastructure and storage, you can see that the array is now added to AppSync. We go to add systems again. This time we'll do a, a VMAX3 array, but this is how you would add a VMAX3 as well. Or rather power packs as well. So again, just put in the IP address of your U4P server or Uni VMAX or Unisphere provider, whatever you want to call it. So this is obviously using the new REST API. And you'll see we have a VMAX 3.12.37 running 59.78 code. And then here we're presented with the 1237 array, and you can see right now we have zero storage groups configured with zero, zero uh, storage resource pools or SRPs as well. If we click on select for the storage group, you see uh, we've discovered all the storage groups that, are, that exist on the array today. If you want to configure certain storage groups for AppSync to use, you simply just click on them on the left, check the box and then click the right icon to move them over to the right. So in this case, I won't configure any. I just wanted to show you how you do that. And we'll talk about that more later. If you'd like to configure a storage resource pool, you just click on it and move it to the right with a button. So you can see we configured SRP1 now. And then obviously you can drop down the arrow and see what you've configured. And then the summary screen. And you'll also notice throughout all the wizards in AppSync 4.0, you have you know, a series of steps, one, two, three, four, five in this case. So it always shows you how far along the wizard you're at. And sometimes when you select certain options, it'll expand that numbered list. So you might have five options to start. And then you say you want to configure second generation copies or something. So then it might shoot to nine steps of the wizard. So obviously the VMAX was discovered successfully, and it just lets you know that some storage group discovery and adding that into AppSync might just continue to work in the background. So now we'll click on vCenter servers and just add a vCenter. Again, it's very simple and works the same way it did in the past. It's just a different interface. So just put in your IP or system name and then the username and password. If you uncheck the run discovery now, it just won't do the discovery right away. And then you can just come in and do it later. You'll notice in the background where we clicked Add Server, that button's blue because it's available. The Remove and the Rediscover and the Reset Credentials are grayed out because you obviously can't click those currently. So in many cases, you just have to check the box next to the vCenter or the server, and then those other options are available. So next, we'll add an application host. Obviously, you select whether it's Unix or Windows. You'll see that the install plugin version is 4.0 with a default port and path. Um, obviously, if you had other versions of AppSync installed, you'd have an option to install a different plugin. But in this case, we don't. So we click on Add Host. 
put in the IP address and the domain and username. Pretty similar to prior versions of AppSync. And then hit deploy, and then you'll see the deployment status, obviously registering, connecting, etc. This usually takes a minute or two to run. I've just sped up the video a little bit so we don't have to wait. You've got a green checkbox that you know everything ran successfully. If you wanted to add another host, you can click use the credentials of the first host for subsequent hosts. And obviously it's here. So you can see on the summary screen, it just tells you the OS version. It's Windows 2016 and when the last discovery was, etc. You'll see on the upper right hand corner there, there's a filter button, a refresh button, um, etc. And we'll talk about some of that stuff later. And then here, if we click on Copy Management and drop down to Select View and click Copies and then click on Microsoft SQL Server, since this host has SQL Server, we'll see that the host that we just discovered is running Windows 2016 and SQL Server 2014. And then over on the right, you have some